Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the draw tight class three hitch receiver here on our 2021 Ford Bronco. Now, I think in my mind, if you're not having a tow pack on your Bronco, definitely gonna be a, a waste of a vehicle here, as this is gonna be awesome to go ahead and really start complementing the variety of lifestyle choices you guys can go ahead and make with this thing. So if you're looking for a cargo basket, a, a bike rack, anything on the back here, looking to tow some stuff, this can be a great way of allowing you to do that. Now, the draw tight's gonna be really easy to install, which I love love to do. You can do it just on the back, on, on your back, on the ground, which is really easy. But we'll kind of break that installation down just in a second here. So if you're looking for that, go ahead, scroll through the video. But let's go ahead and start taking a look at the capabilities and what exactly makes up this draw tight hitch. Well, the class three is going to give you a lot of great capability. You're going to have 4,500 pounds of gross trailer weight towing capability, which is great. You are going to have 675 pounds of tongue weight capacity. Now you are having an e-coat on here as a base, but then they come over it with a nice black powder coat finish. That's giving you this really good luck or really good look, I should say. And also what that means is you're kind of getting double protection against that corrosion. This is going to be on the back of your vehicle. It's going to be seeing a lot of salt, a lot of uh, just weather and tear. So nice that we're giving as much protection as we can. That's gonna make sure it lasts us for the seasons to come. Taking a look at it, you can see it is pretty much well extended from that bumper. Now, I do like that it is adding a little bit of issues maybe for a clearance down the road when we start adding it uh, accessories. But right now, you are about six inches to the end of that raised collar there, um, so from the back of your bumper. The big thing for me, though, right, is how much clearance we have for our accessories. So we wanna take from our center of our hitch pin hole here to the end of our collar, that's gonna put you at two and one quarter of an inch, just to give you guys that a little bit. And then the big thing for me is going to be ahead and actually how far we are extended here from our tire. So let me go ahead and get that properly aligned. That's gonna be putting you, looks to be at right about three and three quarters of an inch from that center of your hitch pin, guys. So that's gonna be a big measurement when we are kind of thinking of what kind of accessories we can actually throw on here. So luckily for you guys too, we are gonna be doing a few test fits here later. To go ahead and check out some of those videos to see what accessories actually fit with this hitch. From the ground to the top of the inner tube of your hitch receiver is gonna be being putting you at 17 and a half inches. We're gonna have a 5 8 pin clip hole here, so that way you guys can go ahead and actually secure this. Now, a lot of accessories are gonna come with a pin and clip system. If you're looking like a bike rack, you have your threaded anti-rattle hitch bolts, which are great, but this can be a great pickup if you're looking for a way of securing a ball mount or something else to go ahead and actually hold it on there. That makes it really easy to go ahead and secure that, and that way you keep everything in line. Now, we highly suggest though, going ahead and looking at some of our locking hitch pins. That way you can go ahead and start actually protecting your accessories while they sit on there, as it's really easy for somebody just to walk right up, right? Pop your clip, take out your pin, and then walk off with any of your accessories you have on there. So locks are definitely gonna be a great way. We have a ton available here at eTrailer.com to go ahead and meet your fancy. You guys can see here too, we do have these nice little safety chain hoops here to go ahead and allow us to add on any of our hooks. You guys can see very, very wide there. I like that. Even these big guys are gonna have an A-OK -okay time actually getting on there and securing our trailer. Now, one of my favorite things about this hitch is how easy it actually is to get installed. You honestly don't need a jack or a jack stand to actually do it. So let's go ahead, take a look how we can get it installed together. Okay guys, to begin your installation, what I like to do, go ahead and get all those tools and hardware that I'm gonna need. So of course, we have our hitch here today. We have our included hardware set up and ready to go. That's gonna be your washer here on the end towards your bolt, of course. And then we're gonna keep our nuts out of it just to go ahead and run it through the other side and we actually get this in place. We are gonna need a three quarter inch socket and wrench. That's gonna allow you to go ahead and actually tighten that on, of course, with your ratchet. And we are gonna go ahead and grab a torque wrench for later to get these up to specifications of what our manufacturer wants. So at this stage, you could just go ahead, what I've done, used our box here that our draw tight came in, and I'm just gonna go ahead and set it on here. That's gonna make getting this up on here a lot easier, right? I'm gonna have to lift it from the ground. Now you could, if you wanted to, grab yourself a jack and some stands and actually get this up, make it a little easier to work under. However, for us, it's really not gonna be too hard just to throw ourselves underneath our truck here and start getting it installed. So let's go ahead, do that together. So here we are underneath the truck again. You're gonna have your muffler right here and you're gonna be looking towards the rear of your vehicle. So this muffler can get a a little bit in the way. So when you're adding your bolts, basically what you wanna do is kinda of go from the top of it, come at it at an angle, and try to get around your muffler. That way we don't actually have to take off the whole thing. It's definitely doable to put on, so let's do that together. What we wanna do, go ahead and support our draw tight up. Make sure you do have one of your bolts ready to grab. And what we're gonna try and do is just align this first pin here, guys. To do that, it's gonna be easy to go ahead and line that up before. Try to find your hole, 
Once I have it nice and aligned, I'm just gonna fit a bolt from the side and approach it just like that, running that through to the other side. Now let's just go ahead straight across here. Maybe swap a hand or two. Reapproach this from a side once again to get past that muffler and start getting it in line. So I have that decently on there. As you guys can see, it's holding that, but it's not all the way aligned, right? So I need to back that up a little bit, probably find that hole. Now what you may need to do is come to the other side. There we go. You can actually see what I'm doing. That's gonna be very helpful. And now we just need to put the rest of our two bolts in. Again, try to avoid running into your muffler. And all you really have to do for that is try to go to the side here and eventually find the angle that actually allows it to go in. Approaching it from the side is always a great idea. Just give a little left surface area to contend with. Well, now that we have all of our four bolts there, we wanna go ahead and just add on our nuts. So when they are fully extended in here, you can see it'd be pretty much impossible to get our nut on. So what you wanna do is back it off just like that. That's gonna allow you to actually rear approach here. And I'm at kind of a weird angle to get that guy. So I'm just gonna show you on this one for now. All we wanna do, simply get our nut set on there. And we kind of push that thread as I try to thread this as well to help me hopefully get on there. Now I am at kind of a weird angle here to allow you guys to see, but there we go. Now that I've got that started, I can go ahead, maybe cinch it up just a little bit to the inside here and allow my bolt to be passed through once again. And we can go ahead and repeat this process on all four of our bolts. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our three quarter inch wrench. And we're gonna set that right there on our nut. To go ahead and have it actually hold it in place. Then we're gonna take our ratchet and our socket and simply place it on there. Now we went ahead and swapped that to one of our smaller sockets here. You guys can see not too much room between here and the muffler. We're gonna go ahead and give you guys that dimension in just a second. But as you guys can see, that way you actually can go ahead and get your smaller socket to actually fit in there. Now all we need to do is start tightening this up. So I'm definitely not having it cooperate with me here. Might start it a little bit by hand if I can. But let's go ahead and just take it one more try here to get this to hold on. Not a lot of room to work in here. So it's definitely gonna get a little cramped for yourself. But all we gotta do is go ahead and tighten down all four of our nuts and bolts. Now, as you are tightening these up, what you wanna do is kinda of go even on it. We don't wanna to go too much on one side, right, and start lopsiding our hitch. Really, what you wanna start finding yourself to do is take a look at your nuts. You want them to start getting really close here on the inside of your other flange. That way, we can actually start bringing in these uh, flanges together at the same rate. That way, we have it seat seating properly on our bumper beam. Well, now that you've got your nuts all kind of cinched up to the end of that flange and we go ahead and start getting really tight on there, you might see just a little bit of movement left on here. You can see ours is pretty well cinched up. Now we do want to go ahead though and grab ourselves our torque wrench to go ahead and get these tightened down to the manu manufacturer's specifications. So let's go ahead, hop back underneath our truck, get them torqued down. Now here's kind of the advantage of having a jack, right, and stands. You can see, a little hard for me to get a full rotation on here. Basically what I'm doing though, is kind of using my midsection of my body to really help me kind of move that, which is great. Now, when we do get starting it to the end there, we don't wanna be doing that. We wanna be using our hands only and utilizing the leverage system of our torque wrench to go ahead and actually get it down to the specifications we want it at. So just listen for your wrench. Now if you don't have one, they are available here at eTrailer.com or really any auto port store out there to go ahead and start getting this on. So now that you're nearing the end of it, you just kind of want to listen for some clicks from your torque wrench to let you know that you're down to those specifications. There we go. And we go ahead and repeat the process on the rest of our bolts. Now what I did as well is I kind of went around and I just kind of got them all still kind of in line. Again, we don't want to tighten too, too much on one side. I like to get them really close. And once I feel like that torque wrench is about to let me know that I am at the right specifications, I'll back off, go do the other ones, and then kind of go down the line, make sure they all are nice and torqued up. But there we are, nice and installed. Now we can get to towing, unless you want to do some wiring. So go ahead and check out some of our other vi videos here at eTrailer.com to see how you can get that installed. 
Well guys, that installation really doesn't take any time at all. Hopefully you guys are following along, you have it installed and it's ready to be towed. Now I think this is gonna be excellent. Again, I really like how much this is extended. Now the one thing I will say to that though, if you're really worried about your clearance levels, right? As those front wheels go up, the back's gonna go down, so will your hitch mounted accessories. And if you have this more extended from that rear axle, that could be stemming an issue for yourself. That might start leaning you towards that Kurt model as it is just a little bit short, shorter, not gonna have that extension. But if you're like us and you're really worried about getting a host of different accessories on here, really wanna take full advantage of that towing system and getting it away from that spare tire. That way you don't have any fit issues. Highly recommend the draw tight. To that end too, the hardware on the draw tight seemed a little less um, well coated than maybe the Kurt did. However, I think it's gonna do a great job of keeping this up in there. If it's something we're really worried about, we can always just do a little bit of regular maintenance on those bolts and just watching our hitch, making sure we're not having too many issues with corrosion as we are building up. Overall guys, I think the draw tight's the go-to in my mind. I really like how we're getting that extended and it's very, very easy to actually get it installed. I love that we're actually having all those capabilities and actually exceeds what the Bronco can do. So you definitely know it's not gonna be lacking in there. Overall guys, I think that that does it for our look at the draw tight class three hitch receiver here on the back of our 2021 Ford Bronco. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching.